Our final player we are highlighting in this prequel series is starting pitcher Josh Brody. Josh is from Australia. Well, baseball isn't truly the number one sport in Australia, but it's something that's around. Obviously, there's baseball leagues everywhere. But growing up, actually, he was training for the Olympics. But what sport? Actually, as a javelin thrower. Well, throwing the javelin really takes some good technique. But after a while, he realized that, yeah, maybe he's not as strong throwing the javelin as he would be maybe trying to throw a baseball. So in high school, he started to tote around the rock a little bit and started to realize he was pretty good. Well, growing up in Australia, not many scouts are coming to see some Australian baseball players play. So he did what any kid would do. Went to his parents and said, hey, there's an opportunity in the U.S. for me to get noticed and possibly bring the rest of the family over. So he took his chance and took a walk-on opportunity at LSU. Well, quickly he found out that the talent gap was large and he had to work. So two years, a red shirt year, another year after that, and another year after that. Thankfully, being a smart kid, he ended up graduating high school at the age of 16. So here he was as pretty much a fourth year junior at LSU and trying to prove himself. Well, he finally had a breakout year after working on his technique, getting good coaching. It finally started to pay off. And even though MLB scouts probably weren't even looking at him, they pegged him as a deep potential. Well, I think he now started to figure it out late and just a couple of scouts started to notice him, but not too many. But then there was a game, a game versus Miami, where he really turned it on. He started to get noticed. Let's go down to the broadcast and check it out live. Number three, and the pitch. Cut on and miss, struck him out, and one away. Well, he didn't get the call on the mound the pitch before. Felt like he should have had him look it, I think. But, you know, that's good composure right there. He found a way to come back with another good pitch to get him to swing and miss. Swings and misses, two up, two down. Already three strikeouts here in the early. No score here in the second. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. What he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look. And you get it right where you want. And it remains three and two. And a pitch. Out there to center. Racing makes the catch. Come on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. Next pitch has popped up. Puts it away for the out. Ow. The one two. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Oh, no fair right there. I mean, that slider didn't move to the very last moment. Incredibly difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip your cap up. Swing and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Three. Got him looking. Out number three. Sixth inning coming up. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Miguel Heraldo. And a pitch. Got him swinging. So he's gotten... In there, base hit. And the bid for history is gone. Well, the last 10 games or so have been anything but fun no at the plate for him. Number so 20. that one has to feel good. Solid swing from start to end. On time with everything. Really good balance. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. And now they've got some speed on. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And two away now. Side thrower is the hitter. I mean, that's just tough. You're looking to protect the two strikes and very difficult to lay off. Number 12 settles under it, puts the squeeze on that one, and that'll end the inning. Today, the right fielder, number seven. And a swing and a miss. That's out number two. 
A big. Try to attack hitters. You know, such an important mindset to have out there on the mound. Especially. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Impressive. Just now getting to 100 pitches as we start this eighth inning. He's given them a lot of length, and we'll see just how much longer they'll let him go. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. On the ground, and that chance handled. Zips it to first. Score at 5-3 for the second out with the third base. Defense worked behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And down on strikes. Three up, three down. 2-2 two -two now. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One gone here. This ball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that now all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot on him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Calls it in, and that's the ball game. Really incredible performance on the mound. You know he's going to stew a little bit over that one hit that he gave up because when you look at the body of work, so dominant, he'd have made just one better pitch. Perhaps he'd have a no-hitter. After a historic game, 19 strikeouts, the kid was officially on the map. Well, he was just on it, though. This wasn't, you know, a game that would make him a first-round pick or even a second-round pick, not even maybe a third- or fourth-round pick. But it still got him noticed. Maybe it was enough to get his foot in the door. Well, LSU is a powerhouse program, and it obviously had a lot of connections to the MLB pipeline. But was this one game versus a pretty good Miami lineup good enough well, in a couple of days, you're going to find out. Welcome to the show.